Family Theater presents Anna Maria Alberghetti and Aldo Ray. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Shut Out, starring Aldo Ray. And now, here is your hostess, Anna Maria Alberghetti. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves and peace for our families and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now, to our transcribed drama, Shut Out. Starring Aldo Ray as Frank. Mr. Burns? Yes? Mr. Endicott will see you in a few minutes. Would you mind filling out this application while you wait? Well, I, uh, I listed most of my background in that letter I sent him. Well, this is just for our personnel files. We have to have one. It's a company rule. Oh, I see. Just the usual stuff. Name, age, past employment. Shouldn't take you long. Okay. You can use that desk right over there. Do you have a fountain pen? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Fine. If Mr. Endicott's able to see you before you're through, you can finish this up after the interview. Okay, thanks very much. It was the usual application form you have to fill out for every job. I'd seen a lot of them in the last year and a half. I'd gotten to be an expert. Printed across the top of this one was the name of the firm, the Farnsworth Annuity and Insurance Company. After that, it was just like all the others, a cold, empty record waiting to be filled in with all the details, all the triumphs and failures, the hits and misses, every bit of personal information you can think of. It was funny there were questions your best friend wouldn't ask you. But here's this young girl sitting at a switchboard outside the great man's office, and she hands you an application that says, spill it, the story of your life, and don't leave out anything. Name? Francis R. Burns. But that's not the name you'd know me by, not Francis. Age? 36, but I don't look it, do I? That's the outdoor work, keeps you young. Home address? 73, uh, no, no, let's just put down the Harrison Hotel. Fourth and Main. At, at the moment, I don't have any other home. Position applied for? Salesman. I could be a good one, too, if I'd keep my mind on it. Education. Circle the highest number which applies. Grammar school, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. High school, one, two, three, four. College, one, two. That's the one, girlie. Circle that one. College, two. Doesn't look like anything very important, does it? Just a little circle around a number. But that was a big year for me. A real big one. It was the second week in May and I'd been picked as a starting pitcher to open against the State Teachers College. I went eight innings, eight innings without giving them a hit. You don't see that kind of hurling in college baseball. You don't see it once in ten years and I was just a sophomore. I wound up pitching a shutout. They picked up a scratch single in the ninth and that killed a no-hitter, but the man died on first because I struck out the next two batters. And that night when I picked Paula up at the sorority house, I told her the rest of it, what had happened after the game. Oh, you sounded so excited on the phone. Uh, yeah, let's sit down out here on the porch. Oh. Is, is anything wrong, Frank? Uh, no, I just don't want anyone else to hear this. Not yet, anyhow. Well, what is it? You see the game this afternoon? You know I saw the game. I, I mean, were you really watching? Well, of course I was watching. Uh, okay, okay. Now tell me honestly, how did I look out there? Well, you... You were wonderful. Even in the ninth when I was in trouble? That's when you looked best of all. You got out of it by yourself. I didn't seem nervous or anything? Hmm. No. Well, I felt plenty nervous. I don't know if I showed it or not. No, you didn't. Frank, will you tell me what this is all about? Well, someone else was out there in the stands today. Yeah. A scout for one of the majors, a fellow named Jerry Graham. Uh -huh. He came down and introduced himself after the game. I just had dinner with him. Well, 
And? He made me an offer. To play professional baseball? Well, of course to play professional baseball. Well, I just asked. Well, you think he's scouting the chess team? Oh, I thought maybe he just offered you a tryout. No, it's a real offer. A contract with a bonus, and I have to make up my mind about it right away. You, you mean tonight? Well, in the next day or so, the Grays are scouting pitchers. Well, would you have to quit school? Well, I'm not worried about that. I just wonder if I'm ready. Well, Frank, what's this going to do to all the plans? Well, the only thing it can do is speed them up. If I connect, we can probably get married sometime next year instead of having to wait for that degree and then the big job hunt. Well, what if you don't connect? Well, I sure ought to know before the summer's out. If it doesn't work, I'll come back here and finish up. Yeah, but you'll lose a whole semester. Honey, I don't think there's very much to lose for a chance like this. No, I suppose not. You really want to do this, don't you, Frank? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right. It's all right with me. Yeah, girly, college two. That's where the circle belongs. It really should be college one and a half since I left before the second semester was over. But you don't have any one and a half on this form, so it'll have to be college two, because I never went back. List all former positions chronologically, starting with your first job. I only had one position, pitcher, but I don't think that's what you want. Even if it was, I wouldn't put it down. List employer's full name and place of business. Well, technically I was employed by Mr. Samuel Griswold of the Griswold Brewing Company. I only met him twice in all the time I worked for him, and I never even saw the inside of his brewery. But he owned a gray, so that makes me a former employee of his. Describe the exact nature of your work. Let's see, I, I threw a curve, a fastball. My first few years, it was so fast you couldn't see it. But that's kind of a limited description of what I really did. When you get down to it, I guess you could say I promoted the sale of tickets. Thousands of them. Boxes, grandstands, bleachers. Everybody came out to watch Lefty Burns. Yeah, that'd be more accurate. I'll just put down that I did sales promotion for the Griswold Brewing Company. State the exact length of time you were employed. Well, that's easy, girly. Eleven years, not counting time in the armed forces. <laughs> That was when I really hit my stride, just after the war. I got out in time for spring training, 45. By then, Jerry Graham was managing the Grays, and he spent a lot of time on me. Every afternoon after the other guys had gone to the shower, he got out there with a catcher's mitt, and I'd pour it in for an extra half an hour. Sometimes, between pitches, I'd look over at the grandstand and see Paula holding little Bill in her lap. They'd both wave, and I'd wave back. And then Jerry would yell at me to quit mooning, and I'd pour it on some more. I won 23 games that year, and never less than 19 the next four after that. And then it started to happen. I'd pitch maybe five or six innings, all the old fire and everything. And then I'd tighten up. Sometimes I was just a little tired. I still have the speed and the control, but I had to take more time and work harder to get it. My salary was 25,000 that year, plus almost another 10 for endorsements. The next season I took a little cut and then another one. Then a year ago last February, Jerry called me on the phone at home and asked me to drop over to the clubhouse that afternoon. Sit down, Lefty. Thanks, thanks. How's Paula and Bill? Good. We're looking forward to some of that Florida sunshine. Incidentally, I haven't got my contract yet. I... I know, Lefty. Well, was I invited down there to be softened up for another cut? No, no. It's more than that, I'm afraid. The club's not taking up your option this year. They aren't. I tried pretty hard for you, but... The boys in the front office. Oh, I'd say you don't have to explain, Jerry. I, uh, it happens, that's all. I'm sorry, kid. I've known this for almost a week, but I, I wanted to do a little looking around, unofficially, of course. See if anyone else in the league was interested. I seem to remember that Chicago tried to buy my contract a few years ago. Four years ago. But not now? Afraid not, Lefty. Well, I can't kick. The game's been very good to me. Yeah? For a lot longer than most of them. You... You fixed okay financially? Oh, not, not, not bad. You know, you make it, you spend it. I've got a few bucks. I'm glad to hear it. I've got something else, too. I've got a name. Oh, no question about that. Then I'm going to use it while it's still hot. Any ideas how you'll use it? Oh, I don't know. Some kind of a promotion job, maybe. A sporting goods outfit? Well, those can turn out to be a lot of work. I don't kid yourself. All they want's the name. Stop worrying, Jerry. I'll connect. I'll find something. <laughs> Oh, 
Paula took the news just fine. She'd seen it coming from a long way off, and in a way I had the feeling she was almost glad it was over. But there wasn't any fooling her about the money. I had to get a job and get one fast. List your next most recent position in the name of your employer. No, I don't think so. It doesn't make very good reading. State the length of time you were employed. No, sir. That's what's bad about it. Three months. State your reasons for leaving. They weren't my reasons. They weren't mine at all. Although I was sure enough to blame for what happened. It took me almost four months to land that first job. And it was the kind I might have been pretty good at if I hadn't started feeling sorry for myself. I got on with a sporting goods outfit, a big one. And about a month later, I went to this convention in New York. My boss told me the first night we were there that we were out for a contract with one of the Eastern clubs, a big contract for a lot of equipment. And all I had to do was smile pretty for the team manager when he came to the party we were throwing in our hotel suite and keep remarking what a great man he was. Except that he wasn't a great man. He was a two-bit busher who had no more business managing a ball club than I did. And after a few glasses of lemonade, I edged him into a corner and told him so. Now look, Burns, I'm the customer, you're the salesman. Don't push me too hard. Salesman, my foot, Jack. This is Lefty Burns, the guy who knocked you out of the pennant three years ago. Go wash your face. You look a little dizzy. Out of the pennant, and you never forgot it, did you? You never forgave me. Okay, so now I forgive you. Stop breathing at me. You had a great team. You know that. A great team three years ago. I still got a great team. You got a bunch of bums here. You haven't got a pitcher with you, the name. Oh, I see. You see what? Never mind. Three years ago, you had a great team, but you blew it. And I suppose all I need to get right back up there is a pitcher worthy of the name, huh? You wouldn't know a good pitcher if he fell into your lap. Are you thinking of trying it? Don't get personal. Look, Burns, why don't you lose yourself before I start thinking this equipment deal over again and maybe change my mind? You never forgave me because you're a little man. That's why you didn't pick up my contract. What are you talking about? When Jerry offered it around last spring. Don't kid me. I wouldn't bother. Your name came up on a waiver list and nobody wanted you, so why take it out on me? Because you needed pitchers bad, and there I was, but you just couldn't swallow your pride. Oh, you loony. Yeah? Sure I need pitchers. Pitchers, not dead-armed has-beens. Who do you think you're talking to? Come on now, keep your voice down. Your boss is looking over here. Leave go on my arm. Hey, left I'll me. say what I want as loud as I want. Everybody got that? Stand back for a second. I've done more for baseball than anyone in this room here. Me. If it wasn't for the stars, the players, the guys who bring him into the ballpark, you birds wouldn't have any equipment business. Guys like me, Lefty Burns. <laughs> Three months. That's why I just as soon forget about that job, if you don't mind. But Paula was great about it. She didn't say a word. List your next most recent position. Two months, except that I quit. Your next most recent position. A week, no, no, ten days. And your next most recent position. That was the last. There weren't any more. And then Paula finally found her voice. Frank. You can't go on like this. Will you leave me alone? I'm trying to think. I've left you alone for almost a year. Face facts, we're broke. You've got to settle down somewhere. Hey, don't you think I've tried? All you've tried is cashing in on your name. It's not enough, Frank. I've got friends, plenty of friends. I'll find something. Dear, I know it isn't easy. You've been a celebrity ever since you can remember. But that's over now. People know me. It's not over. I've got a name that gets me in places. It opens doors. It's worth something. How much has it been worth in the last three months? All right, the last three months. But how about the last 13 years? You didn't mind me unless it's Lefty Burns then. Frank. You ate it up. You loved it. Now I'm having a hard time and you, you hit me with my name's not worth anything. But you're worth something, Frank. Thanks. That's all I'm getting at. It's not your name that made you a fine pitcher. It's what you did. And now I can't do it anymore. You're going to get out the spurs, huh? Oh, Frank. You want me to run down to the employment office and snap up the first 15-cent job they toss at me? I want you to start acting like a man. You're a husband and a father. I think I know who I am. I'm not so sure of that. If you're such a model mother, why are you yelling at the top of your voice with your son sleeping right in the next room? Bill's not in there. What do you mean? I took him over to Mother's this afternoon. I didn't want him around while we had this out. Oh, is that what we're doing, having it out? Frank, try to be reasonable. You decide to sign for a showdown, and from now on I'd better hop... Whenever you snap your fingers, then that's the way. There's no use talking to you now. Where are you going? I'm getting out. What are you talking about? You heard me, 
Greg. When you get some sense, you know where to reach me. For Pete's sake, come back here. Paula! Hello? Who? Jerry, you're well. How's everything? Good, good. Me all, not bad. Would I what? Sure, sure, Jerry. When? No, I'm free tomorrow morning. Your office? Sure. Who is it you want me to meet? Roscoe. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen him around. The little gray-haired guy? Yeah, fine, I'll, I'll be there at 10. Paula? Oh, she's fine. Probably happier right now than she's been in years. There's no place I could put what happened the next morning on this application form except under references. And then all I can write is the name, Mr. Henry Roscoe. He's the one who recommended me to your Mr. Endicott for this job. But I didn't know that's what Jerry had in mind when he called me. I wasn't even sure who Mr. Henry Roscoe was, except that from time to time I'd seen him around the clubhouse over the years. He was a mousy-looking little guy, about 60, with bright, friendly eyes. But when Jerry introduced us and he shook my hand, I could tell he had quite a grip. Well, it's a pleasure, Mr. Burns. <laughs> How do you do? Oh, I know that Henry, uh, uh, Mr. Roscoe, was stopping in this morning, Frank. I just thought that maybe uh, he might be able to put you in touch with something, if you're interested. I, uh, I guess it's no secret I haven't had much luck so far, Jerry. Well, I understand, Mr. Burns, that you were with the sporting goods firm for a time. Oh, I just as soon forget that one, Mr. Roscoe. I made a real mess of it. Oh, I was just curious. You see, I'm in that line myself. <laughs> well, if that's where most of your contacts are, I'm afraid you'd have a hard time getting them interested in me. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm fairly well connected in a number of other fields, too. <laughs> yes? Oh, sure, sure. Tell him I'll be right over. Will you excuse me? The boss. Of course, Jerry, yes. Uh, you two don't need me for this, anyhow. I'll be back in about ten minutes. <laughs> Well, now, I hope you don't think this, uh, this help of mine is offered with anything but the best intentions, Mr. Burns. Not at all. It's nice of you to bother. I've been around ballparks selling equipment for over a quarter of a century. And I know it's a hard thing for a man to adjust to, walking out of the limelight. Oh, I see it. I see it year after year. Young men still in the prime of life, yet living on memories. Memories are pretty hard things to live without. Yes, but living on them isn't the same as living with them. The hardest thing for a former star athlete to accept is that people can forget him in a very short time, almost overnight. Are you giving me a lecture, Mr. Roscoe? Oh, no, 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 I hope not. I'm right in thinking that you're trying to tell me in a nice way not to write on my reputation? I would say this. If you could do such a thing, go ahead. <laughs> but you'd be the first man I ever met who got away with it. I think a name should be worth something. It is, as long as you don't stop building it. It's when you stop working at anything and hope that your reputation will do the job. That's when the trouble starts. Oh, I see it. I see it year after year. Well, just uh, what kind of jo uh, job contacts do you have? Well, I know of an opening in an insurance company. It's a big company. Oh, yes. And they want a salesman. I, I never sold any insurance. Oh, you can do it. You sound intelligent. You look presentable. It's a good opportunity. Here in town? No, no, it's over in Springton. They just opened a new branch, and they're looking for a man who can be trained to manage it eventually. Now, wait a minute. Let me see. Oh, yeah, here's my card. Now, the man to see is a Mr. Endicott. Let me know if you're interested, and I'll contact him. Well, I'll, uh, I'll have to think it over. I expect you to, of course. <laughs> now, there's uh, one last suggestion, Mr. Burns. Yeah? I've helped a lot of young men like yourself get started in a new field... And I advised most of them to say nothing about their name, <laughs> if that's the word for it. Well, uh, how else are they supposed to account for the time they spend making a living as athletes? I found that the parent organization of most baseball clubs are very understanding about that. If you ask for it, they'll give you a recommendation that is good, but not too specific. I see. <laughs> and also, it, it helps you resist trying to use your reputation to get the job. You know, what's wrong with that? Only one thing. It can't help you to keep it. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Burns. So long. Uh, I'll think it over, Mr. Roscoe. Oh, leaving, Henry? Yes, Jerry, I'm late right now for an appointment. I'll drop in next time you're around. I'll do that. Goodbye, Mr. Burns. Bye. Thanks again. Well? He's a funny duffer, huh? Well, it's all on your point of view. Did he give you anything? 
I gave me a generous helping of pious talk, plus a lead in an insurance job. Think you'll follow it up? I guess it can't do any harm. Uh, tell me something, is that old coot a very good salesman? <laughs> One of the best. Well, I guess you can see a lot of this business, even if you're just around selling baseball bats. What are you talking about? Well, he claims to be such an expert on the problems of ex-athletes. You mean to tell me you sat in here and looked at that man for ten straight minutes and never figured out who he was? Henry Roscoe. Hank Roscoe. Hammerhand Hank Roscoe, the greatest outfielder New York ever produced. Hammerhand. He led the league in batting for four straight years, 1917 through 1920. Well, how was I supposed to recognize him? Oh, brother. Okay, so he used to be great, but now he's nobody. That's no excuse. Why not? He recognized you. So that's it. I've come a long way since that afternoon when I pitched a shutout against state teachers. I've come all the way to the offices of the Farnsworth Annuity and Insurance Company to fill out an application for a job that won't pay me one-fourth of what I made my last year in baseball. Mr. Burns? Yes? Mr. Endicott will see you now. This way, please. Thank you. Oh, have you finished the employment form? Oh, yeah, here. Thank you. Mr. Burns, to see you, Mr. Endicott. Oh, come in, Burns, come in. How do you do? Uh, quite well, thank you. Sit down. I uh, hope you won't think I'm trying to rush you, Burns, but uh, I have a mighty important appointment this afternoon. Mighty important. Oh? Yes, I'm taking the train up to see the Grays play Chicago. Doubleheader. You uh, like baseball? Oh, I like all sports. I don't get to see much baseball anymore, but your friend Mr. Roscoe sent me some tickets, so I'm not going to miss this chance. I don't blame you. Well, now, let's see. I've been looking over your letter here and Mr. Roscoe's letter of recommendation. Yes, sir. Let's see. You married? Uh, yes, sir. Any children? Eleven-year-old boy. Good, good. Man needs a family. I imagine your wife would be pretty pleased if you came home with a job today. Uh, yes, sir. I think she would. Well, I wouldn't say you've got exactly the kind of background I'd look for to fill this position, but uh, well, Mr. Roscoe speaks very highly of you here. Say, tell me. Yes, sir? Where you used to work, the Griswold Brewing Company, isn't that the outfit that owns the Grays, the baseball team? Uh, yes, sir. So that's how you came to know Roscoe, huh? Yes, I uh, understand he sells a lot of equipment to the Grays. Oh, he's a great salesman. And you know why? Because he thinks of the other man, the customer, always thinking how he can help the other man. Remember that, Burns. The secret of selling anything, especially insurance. Yes, sir. Does this mean I've got the job? Well, we'll give you a try. You, you won't regret it, Mr. Endicott. Be here at the office 8.30 Monday morning. I'll give you all the details then. I gotta catch that train. Hope you enjoy the game. <laughs> like I say, I haven't seen one for, oh, three, four years anyhow. I think they were playing New York last time. That uh, southpaw they used to have was pitching. Uh, Lefty Burns? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Marvelous athlete. Say, he wouldn't be a relative of yours or anything, would he? Uh, no, he's no relative. Ah, uh, a great pitcher. I'd like to meet him sometime. Well, who knows, Mr. Endicott? Maybe you will. <laughs> This is Anna Maria Albergeri again. Have you been in a drugstore lately? I mean, one of those big, shiny, fantastic places where you can buy everything from a seven-course dinner to an, an air foam mattress. Well, I was in one last night, and I wandered over to the drug section. They really do have drugs for sale in those places. And I was suddenly struck by how much progress man has made in keeping his body healthy. We've got minerals and vitamins and drops for our eyes and ointment for our skin, and it all works, too. We've got pills for taking off weight, putting it on, improving vision, straightening our bones. There is almost nothing they haven't tackled and pretty well conquered when it comes to helping us improve ourselves physically. And I got to wondering, wouldn't it be wonderful if some all-wise scientist could concoct a medicine that would remedy our spiritual ills, make us less selfish, less indifferent to any interest but our own, and more in the image of him 
who created both our body and soul. Well, you can guess the rest. I had no sooner thought that far when it, when it occurred to me that the same all-wise scientist who in the beginning created every root and tree from which all our physical cures have been derived also has given us a medicine to straighten our souls whenever we want to take it. The medicine I mean, of course, is prayer. It's something that can be self-administered and it's impossible to get an overdose. One more thing. It's very effective when taken regularly in, in the home. That's the reason family theater continues to remind you the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Shut Out, starring Aldo Ray. Anna Maria Alberghetti was your hostess. Others in our cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Gene Bates, David Young, Marvin Miller, and Howard McNear. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Dotted Line, starring Barry Sullivan. Jeanette McDonald will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Mm -hmm.